Hello uh, people of Earth and welcome to our special city life today at uh, here in Prague in Czech Republic. So today we are going to have a city life a bit special because I'm not going to be able to take questions live since uh, this is a recording session. Um, I'm with uh, Miroslav Brosh. Hi, Miro. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So Mira is a researcher at the Charles University, the Institute of Astronomy. He does work on the asteroids, formation of the solar system and so on. But today we are going to talk about this, the Orloj. Right, Praski Orloj, as we say in Czech. So Praski Orloj is also the um, astronomical clock, sure. right, in English. So tell us a bit about this object. Why is this uh, uh, alloy is so important? Right. It's, uh, I think, one of the oldest instruments, mechanical instruments in the world, essentially. And uh, this particular instrument is a combination of clock and a projection of sky. So you can see both the time and celestial objects on the sky, which is beautiful. Normally, your clock, your mechanical clock, doesn't show this. So. I think we first should, should explain uh, how the projection works. May I try? Yeah, go ahead. I've got a... Go ahead, show us, show us. I've got a small bowl here, right? Because this clock is a projection of a sphere, I mean celestial sphere, to a plane. And uh, you have to imagine that you start to project from the North Pole and every ray through the sphere uh, touches the plane. So that's the projection. Mm -hmm. And my point here is that every circle on the sphere, like the equator or the ecliptic, every sphere is a sphere on this plane. On a projection. When you, when you project it. So let me start with the circles. Okay, go um, ahead. The biggest circle you can find, I mean the big uh, gold one, uh, <laughs> with Roman numerals. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah I see it. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's the position of the sun on the sky during summer solstice, when the, sky, when the sun is uh, at its highest point on the sky. So the solstice is basically, uh, give us the date of the solstice so people... It's uh, simply the July the 21st or 22nd, depends on, on the year. So that's the, the, the biggest circle, right? The middle circle, the middle one, is the equator, the celestial equator, the, impo the most important circle on the sphere. It's uh, essentially in the middle of this ball, right? And the innermost important circle, which is surrounding the blue inward region, mm -hmm. it's the other solstice, the winter solstice, right? which is uh, um, December the 21st or 22nd, depending on the year. So these are the three important circles and everything which we can observe on the sky, either the sun, the moon, is moving in this, uh, in in this, this region, area. in this region. So, um, so right now I can see the sun. Sure. Which on is the main, on one of the... Uh, which is very high on the sky. Exactly, because... We are here in the afternoon, mm -hmm. so... Uh, you know, 12 hour, it's the Roman numeral 12 in the middle, and we are at 2 o'clock. You know, uh, it's not uh, uh, 2 o'clock of the summertime, it's at 2 o'clock of the Central European time, uh -huh. and uh, it's exactly the position of the sun on the sky, which we can actually observe over there. Uh, we can verify actually that it's showing the sky as, as, it, as it really is. And then at the bottom, this uh, silver ball right. seems to be the moon, right? Exactly, that's the moon. And the moon, as you can see, uh, is on the opposite side of the sky than, mm -hmm. than the sun. So uh, we should call it like a full moon, right? And do you see it? If the sign is high, the moon is very low on the sky. Yeah. Right? So that's, uh, uh, it's in the opposite sense. If the sun is high, the moon is low. And what is uh, one of the beaut I mean, most beautiful tricks on this instrument is that the moon uh, has a beautiful mechanism inside this, uh, this small sphere. Because if, uh, if the indicator moves around the clock, it will turn uh, the ball okay. slowly 
and it will show different phases. So, oh, okay. so we, this we, we cannot show the phase, the of phase, the which is very unique. Yeah. It's it's not uh, present anywhere in Europe that you can see phases of moon, and it's purely mechanical stuff hidden inside the inside the spoon uh, it's inside the moon. Yeah, something we did not say is that the, this is a clock which is was built in 1410, 1410 right? 1410, more than 600 years ago. So there was no electricity, no internet. People were basically relying on pure mechanical devices, gears, rotating, to be able to build something like that. Right. And that's the only clock still in uh, working at this time. Uh, built I think so. I the... think so. Hi. So that's very interesting. So we can see the moon and the sun. And I also noticed there is some stuff called uh, aurora. Crepuscula, something I see like that's this. related to another set of circles. And these circles are um, corresponding to our local horizon. You know, we are at uh, uh -huh. uh, 50 degrees northern latitude in Prague. And the circle which encompasses the red region is our local horizon. Mm -hmm. So if you can immediately see that the moon is below the horizon. Okay, it, it's not visible on the sky right now. Uh, then there are uh, additional circles, like the black one, which is not painted in, in, in gold, but the region in the middle, the black region, is, uh, is a special region uh, which shows uh, the astronomical night. Okay. Right. Which when is the quite star, a... When the stars are visible and the and the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon, more than 18 more degrees than... below below the horizon, and it seems like a modern concept. But this uh, Kate I, below the horizon, 18 degrees, is mentioned even in medieval books, in uh, in the famous treatise by uh, Jan Christian Sprachatitz, who mentions this. Uh, 18 degrees as an important height below the horizon because then uh, there is total darkness. So yeah, for, for the viewers here, we use, still use this 18 degrees as a, lim as a definition of the beginning of the astronomical night. That's the time where if you have a telescope, you should be observing because that's the time where the sun, where the background uh, light is almost is un inexistent and so the, the sky is truly dark. So if there is no moon, you will see best the objects, the faint objects. Sure. And finally, let me mention that the blue circle, that the blue circle does not touch the bottom of, uh, of the astrolabe. Uh -huh. You see, there is a, there is a gap. Which is uh, which is red, and this is important because in uh, in in summer we do not enjoy astronomical nights in Czech Republic because the sun the sun is too high on uh, on the sky and uh, it does not set fully, uh, yeah. fully below 18 degrees. I saw that yesterday night. In fact, at right. 11, it was still the sky was still blue. For right, sense. sure, sure, and that's that's exactly corresponds to this set of circles. So, so the clock was made for here. Sure, sure. It's, It's a local, designed for the sure. by locals sure. for for the area. But right. I have to admit that it's not exactly precise for 50 degrees latitude, right? And it it was quite surprising when when we computed uh, exact positions of all these circles, they do not match perfectly. But uh, that's probably because it's not the original state, and you know it's 600 degrees. So I think the original parts of our orloi mm -hmm. are are the metal ones okay <laughs> but the whole desk everything right, else was uh, renovated else had to be renovated mm -hmm. because it was almost destroyed it was almost uh, it was almost burned uh, at the end of the world war the second so it's not surprising right that this uh, that, that uh, let me say soft parts of orloi are are made anew So we, you may notice we have a lot of people around us because we are in one of the most touristic area of Prague. So there is people here coming to see the Orloi and they're all gonna wait because they all want to see the, the mechanism in action. We should mention that every hour something happened on this, uh, on this clock, right? Well, it's, um, let me say it's not very interesting <laughs> because it's, uh, it, it's not related to the sky. 
it's related to a sort of a religious views. Uh, it's a movement of apostles in the upper windows mm -hmm. up there, but it's not related to the astronomical stuff we are mostly interested in. So here. this was built, the, the mechanism was built after, or it was built at the same time than the astronomical clock? What I'm, came first? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, well, the oldest part is the clock and astrolabe, which was okay. built together, right? So that's it, the, originally this clock was made for time and astronomy. Sure, and together. Exactly. There is a beautiful mechanics hidden uh, behind, uh, behind the clock, right? The, the point of this mechanism is a combination of three gears. There are three very big, um, more than two meters in radius, uh, in diameter uh, gears, which have uh, 365 te uh, teeth. 366 teeth and 367 teeth, which corresponds to the basic periods of motion of the sun, of stars, and of the moon. So this is hidden from view. But yeah, it's a, it's, in it's the, the most Im it. most important trick of this clock. Yeah, fortunately we cannot go inside. We, we, we will in another time. So who designed this? Who built this? What... Uh, unfortunately, I have to say that it's not uh, the, the designer is not known. Right? One name which is uh, often mentioned is Jan Schindel, which was an astronomer, astronomer originally uh, from actually my city, Hradec Králové, mm -hmm. 100 kilometers this way. And um, um, on the other hand, we think that uh, the mechanical building of this clock was done by, um, uh, what's the name? I forgot the name. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> Wikipedia window, don't worry, don't worry. Um, and so they, uh, so they designed this clock, but who is very truly capable of using it? Like for instance, I've, been, I've seen this clock quite often. I go to Prague every year, almost. And it's the first time this year that I notice the, that the moon phase is shown. So, right now, who has, been, be, who has to, been using this? Well, you have to be simply very careful and you have to spend at least half an hour thinking about what, what is shown there. And you have to, you have to be careful. We did not explain uh, the times which are shown there. Right. Yeah, which but, uh, is kind of important. Right? I think I think <laughs> quite important. Let's right? do that. Okay. So let's start with Roman numerals. Roman numerals, which are the most important ones, uh -huh. because they show the Central European time, the one which is commonly used by citizens. So, so it's very important. Then the outer circle, do you see it? the black one yeah. with uh, old-style Gothic numerals? These are uh, these are so-called old Czech time, and they show the time. Uh, from the sunset of the previous day. Okay. And do you see the problem immediately? Well, the the sun is moving. It's moving, yes. It's moving so. all the time. So you have to adjust the position of the outer circle during the year. So it's moving like this, slowly, oh, entire, forth and back. Okay. And it's a, again, it's a sort of non-linear mechanism, uh, which is a much newer than, uh, than the old original clock, and which was uh, built to be as precise as possible. I think there is only a fraction of a minute difference between the sunset um, and uh, uh, yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember I read that, in fact, uh, before we implemented the CET and all of this, cities at different times. So when you were traveling from cities to cities, you had to basically adjust your clock because each city has its different time. So that's the check time is the black, the, the one here is uh, the, the, the no, time. I, I mean, it's, a, it's a more general. It's a time which is counted from the sunset of the previous day of the place so you it are, tells right? you it tells you exa uh, exactly uh, how many hours are left before there is a sunset okay for example i think that's the most uh, useful function of this uh, you know if you look carefully on the right hand side mm -hmm. and the horizon you see there is 24 yes 24 hours from the previous sunset and now we are left with one, two, three, four, five, six hours. 
before, see that. before six the sunset. hours of sun right. before the sunset, which is useful when you are working in the in the field and at the time uh, they didn't have electricity, so they sure. needed to know how much how many days of light daylight they had. Sure, sure. So that's the kind of time they wanted. Sure, sure. And finally, Hi. there is a third system, which is uh, the black numbers starting from one, two, three, four, five, six, and ending uh, at eleven, which is uh, partly hidden by the ecliptic. Do you see? Mm -hmm. yeah. These are so-called uneven or temporal hours, which are not uh, of the same length all the year. You simply divide uh, uh, the short day during uh, winter yeah. into twelve uh, intervals. Uh, they usually spend only 40 minutes and then in summer you have again 12 intervals uh, but uh, they usually correspond to one hour and 20 minutes or so okay. so they three times three times exactly. and three times systems and th so people ask of them I'm sorry, I have to ask I know we astronomers sure. but what are the astrology sign on the, in the black thing Sure, these are signs of, signs of zodiac, yeah. and they correspond to the constellations on the sky, although it's shifted by one constellation uh, in, the, uh, in these days. So, this. so basically right now it indicates where is the sun located in which constellation at the moment. Exactly. And now let me mention two, uh, uh, let me say, controversies of our Orway, right? Uh, one is... Uh, related to the ecliptic. Uh, do you see the ladder, uh, which is uh, around the ecliptic? Yeah. Which, which seems like a beautiful um, uh, stuff, which makes uh, this particular Orloi look originally mm -hmm. like Prague Orloi, right? Prague astronomical clock. It was a mistake made by an astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Joseph, jo Joseph Bem, okay. which computed the size of the ecliptic uh, in a wrong way. And uh, the ecliptic was smaller, was too small. And so it had to be corrected. And the correction is the beautiful letter. It's a beautiful, uh, uh, oh, okay. So it, it actually made our uh, clock uh, beautiful. And I like this. It's, it's a typical... What matter, I, scientists can make mistakes. What matter is sure. that they find out about the mistake and they correct them, right? Exactly, sure. And that's one and of now the, the outcome is even better than before. Right? That's great. <laughs> and another one. Uh, do you remember the ball and the plane? Yeah. Uh, so uh, everything which is inside the red circle is essentially below our horizon. Mm -hmm. So in, in other words, it means that the Earth is the red circle. Yeah. It's the surface of the Earth, our local horizon, right? And now we have the Earth in the middle. Yeah, why <laughs> the, 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 the gold That's symbol, true. the yeah, gold yeah, symbol, yeah, yeah, I'm which is a kind it. of uh, mind-boggling, isn't it? It's, why did uh, they put this here? Uh, because there is an empty place, <laughs> and it's a kind of uh, image of the Earth located on the Earth, okay. <laughs> which is kind of uh, nonsense. Yeah, right? they could have put something else. But here, maybe, let yeah. me sh let me show it again. Right. The point is that if you project anything from the North Pole then what is located in the middle of your instrument, of your astrolabe? It's actually a part of the sky which is not visible because mm -hmm. it's below the horizon. You can even project the surface of our own Earth, but it was not known at the time. The, the, there is Antarctica, yeah. right? So um, originally, uh, uh, I mean, uh, two years ago, there was even a paint of Antarctica <laughs> Uh, in the middle, of, in this the middle of, this? of this autonomical clock. And there was a big discussion whether we should keep these continents in the middle of our uh, Orloi, whether there should be a north hemisphere or south hemisphere. Uh, there was a suggestion that we should make Prague in the middle of our Orloi and show the position of Prague. But uh, in essence, there should be nothing because it's it's the yeah. horizon. <laughs> But they but didn't like the empty space, probably. So that's exactly. the reason. They that's the reason why they invented something in the middle, and because the sun and the moon orbit together uh, our Earth in the in this ah. geocentric system, uh, it's uh, it's beautiful because it shows that at that time most of uh, people simply believe in geocentric system. Yeah, definitely. And this was in 1410 again. So, 
one, a few more things. It's kind of new. It looks new, right? It looks new. I do remember it was not like this two years ago. So what happened? They did some renovation. They uh, repainted it. What's the? Can it you was tell a, us the process a bit. It was a renovation of the whole tower. Okay. So it was a big investment, and uh, uh, when you have when you re when you renovate such a huge building, you have of, of course funds to renovate also the astronomical clock. So uh, there was a big discussion between people interested in clock mechanisms and astronomers. What should be done with the with the clock? And there were uh, many options, and let me say the extreme one. Yeah. Right? The extreme one was to remove the middle part of uh, of Orloy, the middle circle, and remove the Earth in the middle, simply because it's the horizon. Okay. Right. And it, it would be better from the astronomical point of view because we know that it's a projection of the sky. So uh, now the Orloy would look uh, totally differently. Yeah, definitely. You would not recognize it, right? But I have to admit, I did not like it, right? But I have to admit that it's much more clear, it's much more understandable. It's the most scientifically it's a, it's accurate a one. scientifically uh, correct yeah. uh, approach because the Earth should not be located in the middle. <laughs> so, but... Um, but you know, the, the middle part of Orlo is also quite old. You mentioned the, uh, 1410, mm -hmm. right? But I barely remember 1570 when the middle part of, uh, of the clock was removed and it was replaced by something. Uh, it was not the earth, probably, but it was re replaced by, by an instrument which helped to correct moon phases because the original mechanism was not good enough to show uh, phases exactly. So that was one controversial one. You say you have, you have two controversial uh, changes they wanted to do on the clock during the renovation. What was the second one? Uh, what about the color? Right, the color, um, you know, it's a kind of... Um, subjective uh, stuff mm -hmm. you know so but well, that's what people me, see me personally <laughs> um, um, I, I like more the original orange color but there were arguments that this color is not typical for the uh, for the beginning of 15th century right so uh, I'm not certain I'm not an expert in art in uh, sculptures mm -hmm. in paintings and etc so uh, it would be very interesting discussion with someone who understands uh, these uh, artistic uh, feelings and the phenomena of the beginning of the 15th century. But I'm afraid that we cannot push it uh, to the original uh, 15th century instrument. You would lose a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. You would lose uh, the ecliptic, you would lose uh, the earth. You would lose all the stories which accumulated over 600 years. Even if they're not completely scientific, this is a this is basically a testimony of the evolution of our species over 600 uh, I years. Think so. I think and so. And that's why it is important to renovate it, keeping it what the mistake that was done in the past, but also make it maybe slightly more modern. I kind of like the mod. I, I looked modern, more modern slightly now than the first time I, I saw it. Okay. Personally, the color are more like more of our time. And an object like this does not belong to anybody, so everybody has a, a say on how they want the clock to become and what, uh, what we should do in the future. That brings me to another, another point, um, something unrelated, but related to a clock. In fact, um, in one of my next interviews will be probably with the Long Now Foundation, and they are working on a the, on the clock that will be able to work for 10,000 years. So this clock has been working for 600 years, right? And it has to be renovated. I mean, you mentioned there's it been like some destroyed. change. It has been almost destroyed. So this is a big challenge to do something mechanical that will be, la will be able to last for 10,000 years. So that's the reason I wanted to see this clock and talk to you today, to hear, to learn from the past, how we can do something as good, even better for the future. But thank you very much, and uh, I remind our viewers, wherever you are on this planet, that they can send us questions, so we take the time to answer to the questions. 
Mira, you will take the time to uh, write on, to uh, answer questions maybe sure. for, for, for us. And um, thank you very much for following us. I'm sorry it was a bit hectic, but uh, hey, it's Prague. It's a summertime, so <laughs> that's the way it is. Thank you to our camera guy in the back. You don't see him. It's an astronomer as well, Josef, Josef Anouche. And uh, thanks a lot, Mira, okay, for, thank for you your time. For the interview, Frank. Nice right. to meet Thank you. you. Bye -bye.